A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, for the fourth day of our CPD program. And this is today is the final day. Technically, today is the final day of the presentation. And many of you might have joined with certain WhatsApp groups. Therefore, we would simply consider these WhatsApp groups are some alumni of uh, this CPD course. And we recommend you to be in touch because there were a lot of Q and A Q questions being raised, and there were a lot of educational materials to be shared them on, and there would be a lot of opportunities to be shared and some prospective future courses as well to be shared in this WhatsApp group. Therefore, we recommend all of you to be in touch with those WhatsApp groups. And few ground rules, as we know from the beginning, we don't allow generally the chat box to you to chat or raise any questions in the call session, which could go around somewhere around nine o'clock. And from nine onwards, we will have a Q&A session where you have the ability to raise your questions through chat box as well as you can raise your hands and shoot your questions directly. And the attendance to be marked through only a Google form shared by uh, the organizing committee. It comes at the chat box of the Zoom platform or else could be found in the YouTube chat as well because once we have exceeded the participants by 1,000. So we will simply shift into the YouTube live streaming. Therefore, what we recommend again to have parallelly the YouTube live streaming because there could be a participants more than 1,000 where our platform, the Zoom platform, is only have the eligibility of having 1,000 participants only. attendance mark uh, YouTube biggest ha Zoom platform me kethi na chat boxes har ha pamanai a chat box ekhi api even a Google form me ka ke form me ko fill karlo but attendance mark karna polo. If you have any any difficulty of technical difficulty due to a failure of the signals or failure of power, you have to keep certain records of your uh, screenshot. What we recommend is to keep screenshots in the YouTube or in the Zoom platform. With the intervals of 30 minutes so that you can prove your attendance when the organizing committee demanded if they have any doubt with that remark ladies and gentlemen we would like to move to the today's session and there are certain areas we would like to highlight because uh, number one is the using the attendance and sometimes people have uh, people couldn't mark their attendance in previous sessions so what we recommend is to go through all the youtube videos and prove to the organizing committee that you have already watched them in different intervals. So that's one recommendation. And what we have observed in last time as well, once we mark the attendance, people used to drop down by simply not attending to the Q&A session because as there are a lot of undergraduates here, I would like to highlight the CPD program is not just another university course where you have to go mark your attendance and go home and you have the exams where you have to learn together and pass the exams. So that's, those are not the objective of a CPD program. And I, could, I would like to highlight one, one of a famous quoting long times ago, it was valid, but now today on, I'm, I'm, I think that from current context, it is not no more valid. Now one is the knowledge is the power. That was a long time ago, we were taught as knowledge is the power, but, what we now know is knowledge is not just a power, but knowledge is a potential power. If you put certain active ac actions on it to the knowledge, then only you can get a power. actions api nawathath kiyanne attendance sheet ekak mark karala wala metrin panel ekak hilla attendance mark karala certificate ekak ganne ekana objective ekak api ekata awasthawa denawa namuth eka nemey meke paramartha eka nisa api ratak hatiyata saha api visheshana apita anagadi thiyena challenges walata gattoth certificate ekak laba ganima pamanakin mama hitanne api issaraha thiyena prashna walata mona denna puluwama ekila api api hunga kene competitive wenno aya man ekak api lanka athula api loko competition ekak thiyena wala puluth thiyena with pitrata rakiyawata wage karanna visheshana Indian, Bangladesh, Saha, Ethiopia, 
hati hati kapit eh urin nurag gate le berdekaran lah itu. Ikan sa ni kang sa hati kaki ni pamanak si mawin si mawin mawin itu ni apa disi diri kamu nak tiga gila. One final remark, just a certificate or a paper qualification would not work in the future. Therefore, especially the young undergraduates and ladies and gentlemen, please make a note that we have to work hard. It has to be a genuine work. It's not just like to show some work. So with that remark, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to move into today's session. Today is one of a, I recommend is one of the most important sessions. That's why we kept it at the last. And to have the session, we have, a, in my opinion, is one of the best grooming young engineer, which I have seen personally, because I have seen him grooming and I have seen his performances by practice. And he, this gentleman have proven by himself that he is a capable person. Engineer Dilan Tilanga is a chartered engineer, originally graduated from University of uh, Moratua, of his basic degree on electrical engineering from University of Moratua. And now he's reading for his MBA from uh, PIM. He's a chartered engineer in, specialized in building services engineering. And as I mentioned earlier, he is a classic example for especially the young engineers. By the look of him, maybe I might look younger than him, but he's he's about five, six years younger than me. Therefore, this gentleman has, as I mentioned earlier, he's a classic example for all young engineers that he has done, what he has done in his career so far. And I see a serious potential from this gentleman. So it's a privilege and honor to have Engineer Dylan today as our speaker, and he will be talking mostly about one of the key areas and the upcoming and the updated knowledge of PA, we call public address, BGM, the background music, Wi-Fi networks, GRMS, which is guest room management systems and introduction to the controls of AV system. So as it sounds, it's a heavy content, but I'm sure that he will simply touch it and open the windows and keep our eyes open where we have to make our attention. Dylan. It's over to you. Thank you, Engineer Narin, for that uh, lovely introduction. Um, let's move to the presentation. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in uh, this last day of four days CPD, as Engineer Narin said, we are going to touch some of the um, uh, ELE systems that we have in, in the um, sector. So as Indian, I also mentioned, I, I am more from a working background. So almost all the content that I'm going to uh, discuss today, are mostly my personal experiences. So you will see more biasness towards uh, practical aspects than the theoret theoretical in this presentation. And I hope as many young engineers are here, young graduates are here, that will give you a better understanding uh, throughout next two hours. So, so these uh, subjects are evolving subjects, yearly subjects. If you can remember, you know, even last week as well, Engineer Jagat also mentioned the same thing. So these are evolving subjects, so you need to um, keep uh, updated about the uh, uh, current technologies, right? So this presentation will give you a glimpse of current application, but the system as system is evolving as we speak, you have to relate most updated technology. That's my final uh, uh, thought uh, before beginning our presentation. So with that remark, let's go to the uh, content today. So, so here is the outline of the lectures that I'm going to cover uh, today. The first one is public address system, or we call it PA system, and background music. And I specify that as a high by background music. So I'm touching specific area. And then Wi-Fi system or wireless LAN, guest room management system, and audio visual control system. So moving to the first one, public address system. So this public address system is very common in most of the building around us, hospitals, hotels, restaurants, factories, offices, airports, indoor stadiums, exhibition halls, everything is uh, uh, can be equipped with pu public address system. In simple words, that gives or public address system, public address system gives facility to distribute an audio message throughout the entire building or a 
specific part of the building. So these different areas can assign to different, different uh, public address zones. So we can give different type of audio equipment for each zones also. You can route the input sources to uh, designated zones. So if you move to components, so before moving to the component, I'll simply say these all these ELE systems are basically comprised of three parts, right? If I go to this diagram, um, so I can say these are inputs and these are signal conditioning devices or processors altogether. And these are outputs, right? Field devices. So here, what we have here, um, what we have here is microphone, set of microphone, different type of microphones. And uh, this, this specific microphone we call paging microphone. So the, through this paging microphone, you can uh, address specific zone by pressing the pressing a button, right? So that's a specific kind of uh, microphone. And next one is fireman microphone. And fireman microphone is exclusively for fire application and it's equipped with emergency key. And uh, it's permitted to be used as a remote microphone for emergency broadcast. Again, just like in the uh, paging microphone, there are situations that zone selection is possible with the micro microphone announcement. And uh, it offers a surveillance function uh, to detect failures, including microphone element failure, because in a fire situation, we should aware that whether this uh, microphone is working properly. Other than that, we have this kind of wireless handheld microphones, right? These are kind of input devices. I have not put uh, here, but uh, there are input devices such as DVD players, uh, sometimes uh, um, FM AM tuners like that. Uh, next set of is speakers, right? Different types of, of speakers you can see in public address system. Depending on the application, we can see uh, different type of speakers. The first one here is a ceiling speaker. So we use ceiling speakers to distribute sound uniformly in area. These are mounted in ceiling in low level ceilings. And uh, the, the main part is uniform sound distribution. That's why we are using these things. If you travel along a, one area that uh, those speakers won't give you any sound distortion or I mean sound uh, gap in between the speakers. Uniform sound distribution will be there. And the next one is wall mounted speakers. And I didn't mention the previous one. Uh, these speakers are in the range of six watt, right? There's a power capacity, six watt generally. And next type is wall mounted speakers, or we call this box speakers. And uh, this is mostly used for foreground, foreground music. And you may have seen, you, have, you may have heard background music, uh, then what's the foreground music? And foreground, foreground music is for active listening. So in foreground music, it should grab customers' attention or excite them and engage them, right? The background music is different. I'm, I'm going to tell that in the next section. And this can be mounted on walls or columns, not in ceilings, right? Mounting uh, pattern is different. The last one is paging horns. You may have seen this one all around the rallies or whatever uh, functions, right? So there is identity for this paging horns. It can give you high sound pressure level. In simple terms, high sound pressure level stands to a uh, sound level that you can hear, right? But this one has major limitations, such as this has very limited frequency range or narrow frequency range because of that, you don't hear very quality noise, quality voice from these uh, speakers. So generally you, you will hear, or you can hear some pain in your uh, ears when you are here through these phones, right? Because the frequency range is very high. It's not comfortable. And also sound quality is very low and the distortion is high. You cannot hear the origin, voice of the origin properly because of the distortion. And as, as I said, uh, this is mostly used for outdoor applications and uh, even for car parks and areas like that. Uh, next, uh, we discussed inputs and output section. And here we have processing equipment, right? So you can um, 
see here one item called audio matrix and here is a paging controller so different product will give you different names but uh, the function is to take input devices right take input devices and route that to output devices like for an example in this situation we have three input sources right sound sources and outside we have nine nearly nine zones so how you can distribute this throughout the zones so this is the device that to do that job right also that's not the only thing it will it will do some uh, signal conditioning as well right gain and uh, etc so other than that there is another device here these are power amplifiers right so, so power amplifiers you can see this reading 4 into 60 watt there's a meaning for that four stands for it can um, manage four zones it can connect to four zones and capacity of each zone is 60 watt if i relate to previous uh, type of speakers that i speak spoke before um ceiling speakers had six six watt uh, capacity then you can connect 10 speakers for a single zone something like that so there are different ranges i'm just putting a 60 watt power amplifier here and again 4 into 60 watt power amplifier the last one is a, is a one channel amplifier right so the amplifiers generally is used to take the input signal and amplify uh, to give i mean transmit that to a longer distance right in the simple terms and other than that in the field we have attenuators so attenuators or volume controllers are used to control the sound of that is specific uh, zone right so this can be in the field and there are specific kind of volume controllers that can be mounted on racks as well racks in the sense network racks or where we, we put these devices right so it sh should uh, mostly in in a uh, kind of a contained area we call the elv rooms etc so with that, I'll move to a typical small public ad uh, address system. So this is a very simple one, right? So it has three inputs, page in my, uh, two page microphones and multi-disc CD player. And there are three output zones. So one, zone two, and so on three. This matrix routes the input sources to output destination. I explained that earlier. And also, this matrix can incorporate message card for alarms. Even it can take alarms or announcements. And all the parameters uh, like microphone controls, signal routing, priority settings are programmable. Sometimes some some products will uh, give the facility to log into devices to, through uh, uh, computer software. Sometimes using this device itself, you can program this in, in simple situations. Um, activating an input controller makes a request to do matrix. Situation like if you need to call for a specific zone, for example, if the person need to talk to this supermarket zone, then there is a button here, right? You can press the button for that supermarket zone and you make the request to this matrix. And the matrix will give the routing to uh, send that sound signal to this zone right this is the this is the kind of function of matrix but remember this is a very simple application so matrix and amplifier is a combined device so this is a very simple uh, application and not scalable it's scalable in the sense you cannot use this for several flows because these are like a single flow and two flow and very simple applications and very economical because it doesn't require a separate amplifiers And the next one is a typical public address system that we can use for multi-story buildings. So if, if I take this one, so I explained the components before, but uh, assume you have three floors here, right? The, this is the ground floor, the first floor, and the second floor, right? So here we have three inputs and nine public addressing zones. So just like the previous situation, 
just like, not like the previous situation we, here we have separate power amplifiers for each flow right from the audio matrix we are having a uh, different signal to each amplifier an amplifier is placed in a single flow generally that's how the application even you can expand this to 20 30 flows as well the arrangement will be the same but there are limitations like audio matrix matrix can give some outputs right the outputs is a limitation if you take several audio matrix can be eight output signals 12 output signals but if you need to expand if you have more than 12 uh, zones you may need to expand it maybe you can connect several matrices together right such situations so this is advanced because even it can uh, has a uh, i mean the functional wise this matrix is highly advanced than that combines combine one and it can expand to several flows and this will be expensive because this this is a enterprise solution not a very uh, basic solution and moving on to a different segment of a public address system this is called evac you may have heard this one uh, for whoever in the field you may have seen this i mean heard this term evac emergency voice evacuation communication right so this is a kind of expansion to public address system but there are things that need to satisfy make public address system to a evac system so this is again one way emergency voice evacuation system and uh, this will be used in a fire situation instead of bells when there's a fire i'll show that, that in the next slide when there's a fire fire alarm panel will give, give a signal around the building right but when you have evac system instead of that sound it can give a vocal uh, vocal uh, message voice message right and most importantly this is a regulatory requirement you cannot play with this right if you breach uh, any components or any uh, requirements in this a code it's a legal breach right so you cannot avoid that and again it will automatically activate for fire alarm signal that i'll uh, explain in the next slide and there is a recorded message when there's a fire signal there's a record recorded message uh, in the uh, input side just like the amplifier cd player and there can be a recorder right there are recorded message so the matrix will route to uh, take that recorded message throughout the zones when the fire signal is there and speakers are a little bit different than pa speakers because there will be a fire dome to uh, withstand for fire situations backside of the speaker is covered with the fire dome and cabling will be different again cabling shall be necessarily we call it bs 6387 category cwc oh, we call it fire rated cable for an example for cable to become this kind of a cable uh, one parameter is it should withstand for 950 celsius for three hours right 950 celsius fire three hours it should stand that's the one parameter there are parameters like that so this is a specific cable that you need to consider when you have evac system and also you can install inside two hour fire rated enclosures but most probably we are uh, following this one pirated cables in sri lanka and added to that there will be a backup there should be a backup power supply the, the, the reason is uh, there can be power play failures means power play failures or generator power failures because power is coming from outside or maybe from different part of the building but there should be backup power within the rack itself so that it it can alarm for 30 minutes so uh, should alarm for 30 minutes and should be in his standby operation for uh, 24 hours that's the legal requirement regulatory requirement i'll move to uh, the single line, line diagram this is very similar to the previous one um added to that what are the differences we have so we have fire alarm panel signal right fire alarm panel and fireman fire mic and there is a battery bank and cold monitoring and these things are different but let's uh, check uh, how this operate when the fire alarm signal comes right when there is fire situation for example i am taking this warehouse right in this warehouse there can be a fire when there's a fire 
fire detectors will give the signal to fire alarm panel. With that notification, fire alarm panel will alarm some devices upon the selection. And at the same time, fire alarm can give, give a signal to this audio matrix. When the audio matrix gets this signal, what it does is it will take that recorded message, right? Just like the CD player, there can be a record, uh, recorder, right? It will uh, take that recorded message and it will route to uh, this warehouse or all over on the building. To decide on that, whether you can give the signal to warehouse, that is a specific requirement, right? So audio matrix has to understand that the fire is in, in this area. How can uh, audio matrix understand that? That's the situation. Fire alarm can give signal, fire alarm panel can give signals in two ways. One is low level signals, or we call it low, uh, like uh, wall free signals. Other thing is high level signals. I'll tell you the difference. Now, when there is a fire in this warehouse, uh, fire alarm knows there is a fire in the, that location, but it will give you out, give, give output signal as a wall free contact or low level signal in that situation there is no indication which area is that it just give a signal that there is a fire right so audio metric is accept that there is a fire in the building so it can give the message all around the building it doesn't segregate it but if you have a high level signal if you have a high level signal audio metric can read fire alarm panels uh, indication the fire is in this area warehouse so it can segregate the area and it can route the signal to warehouse or adjacent close like that but remember this fire alarm uh, this communication high level communication is very costly even if sometimes it requires licenses but low level communication it's just a dry contact signal but depending on the application sometimes it's required Sometimes uh, you can go with dry contact signals if it is several floors. Of course, in this kind of situation, this is just uh, three floors. You can go with low level signals. And what are the benefits of uh, voice alarm? Uh, then public can take a notice of spoken word rather than bells or sounders because fire alarm will give sounding, right? Just a sound. And again, sp spoken message. This is a spoken message. Even the recorded message is a spoken message. It identifies the nature of the problem and gives clear instruction. You can pre-program it because, for example, again, warehouse. If the fire is in warehouse, you can tell adjacent areas. So the ice fire in the warehouse, mm, you evacuate the area like that. So also it can be used. Voice alarm can be used for emergency service, not just not for the uh, Fire application, even for emergency services, can be used. And most importantly, so what's the difference between PE and public address and UAC? You cannot see much difference other than having these specific devices. So the same architecture you can use for public address system as well. There's no challenge, right? So we have improved a little bit, but the public address function is still there. So even for background music also, this can be used, but remember uh, the sound quality or the music quality will be a little bit low. Right, I'm going to a single input to summarize the program. We're going to public address system. We're going to have a public address system. We're going to have a specific area. We're going to have a specific area. We're going to have a specific area. We're going to have a message. We're going to have a special condition. We're going to have a Inputs, processing, outputs. input devices microphones, MP3 players, processing devices audio metrics, controllers, amplifiers, field speakers, volume controllers, field system 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 Advancement here current system. Then the Dinama fire rated cable use current cabling monitor, normal cable use current. Eat a mother speakers, a Kathiano fire dome maker, a dome fire dome mechanic, 
ඒකෙන් ෆයර් එකේ නේක නවත්තනවා යම් කිසි ඩියුරේෂන් එකකට ඊට අමතරව බැටරි බැංකයක් තියන්න වෙනවා මොකද ඒ ඒ තියෙන රැක් එක ෆයර් සිටුවේෂන් එකේදී වර්ක් කරන්න වෙනවා එලියෙන් පවර් එකක් ආවත් නැත රයිට් ඔය වගේ බේසික්ස් ටිකක් තමයි අපි කතා කරේ and i forgot to tell you one more thing in even in pa situation when there is a fire signal right assume you are giving some message to some specific area right say again for this production area production manager is giving some message to the microphone at the same time there is a fire in warehouse then what will happen if the production area is not getting the fire alarm, fire message is a security i mean is again life safety situation right it's indicated to people's life so at that situation this should stop P pa should stop right that's the that how it uh, established in all of the building because when there is a fire signal pa system or bgm system get muted we necessarily do that right in applications and the next one is hi-fi background music system now the architecture is little bit similar to pa system but if you go to hi-fi what is hi-fi again hi-fi stands for high fidelity right in simple terms it's the audio that's very high quality right so these systems can reproduce music with high accuracy just as the old source with high accuracy and extremely little distortion not like in uh, pa situation right also we are using this background system for create an ambience or a mood right it goes with the emotions because some application like application wise this is quite different to pa because in the pa system it should get the attention of the occupants isn't it but bgm should should not interrupt or should not take the attention of occupants also it should not interrupt conversations as well so it just give some mood and other thing this bgm system is always running compared with pa pa is running i mean pa is uh, operating when there is a message or some situation but if you take bgm it should run whenever a uh, uh, building is open right building is operating it should run now it could be audible instrumental music played at very low level and uh, mostly in public spaces and speakers are selected for wide re- frequency ranges not like in previous situation it should work in low frequency as well as in high frequencies so generally you see you see uh, two way speakers so for high frequency two way speakers like peters and speakers and those situation those are two way speakers and the speaker power rating is little bit high if you take ceiling speaker it goes in the range of 30 watt 60 watt because it give very uh, high sound quality with little distortion this is advanced thing and music sources can be selected from the from the field but in pa situation we couldn't do that here music sources if you require you can adjust it from the field i'll explain that in the next slide how we are going to do it in the field also these hi-fi background music systems are running in ip networks as well this thing most, most of the current uh, hi-fi background music systems are supporting ip networks the advantage of having uh, this facility you don't need to run cable between the floors because in every high rise building in the capital there will be a local area network it network so if you can connect your devices into it network you don't need to run cables between the floors so this is the uh, overview for bgm and if you go to components just like in previous situation very similar i mean the application wise similar there are music sources not the mics music sources in this situation music sources can be different items so here one one first one here is a music server and the second one here a player or it could be am fm tuner you can listen to a uh, music sorry uh, fm channels as well right so music servers especially are working with paid subscriptions so these subscriptions like are not uh, mostly in sri lankan companies mostly from foreign companies right it's a device connected to internet when it's connected to internet 
those uh, server providers are giving music monthly monthly basis it can it, it will it will be charged right in monthly basis or annual basis it will be charged uh, what they do is during the period the, that you set up assume you are opening your building from 8 am to 10 am then you can uh, uh, set up this is your morning time and this is your peak time and this is your uh, closing hours during the day of time you can select music i mean you can just tell them i mean these uh, music server providers you can tell this is the this is our arrangement based on that they will select the music and you don't need to interrupt they will select by themselves and very fresh uh, music they can upload right so and you you can't play things from the premises locally you cannot connect these things this is connected to internet and take the uh, uh, content from the internet but in this situation you can play even these uh, cd players also you can run there are music servers which works in laptops or pcs uh, web based ones you can connect to those as well right these are kind of music sources that we have and then the audio dsp digital signal processor and this is these input sources are connected to this digital signal processor right so and the next one is ip based power amplifiers i'm telling ip based specifically because most of these amplifiers are coming with ip based now if i zoom in this to a little bit right uh, right this this amplifier you can see that right uh, this one this is a four channel amplifier you can see four connections here right so these are outputs now where are the where are the inputs so amplifier what it generally does is it takes the input signal and it it amplifies and due to due to the output so this is the general functions of function of amplifier but in this situation you can't see input side so this is just a uh, this is the front side and this is the back side right there is no input side input coming from these ethernet jacks right networks these are network devices right so mostly you see these things in high fidelity background music systems and then we have lcd controllers as i said you earlier you can um, configure this in the field right so i'll take this example this side we have zones we have if you take a specific flow there can be zones like this entrance i'm, I'm not sure whether you can read this entrance main restaurant grand ballroom pool and spa so these are your zones right and you can select what type of music you need this for this full zone right the first one is pop classical acoustic jazz and blues you can select it just select this zone and select the music it's simple as that you can do that at the uh, field as well right and these are uh, head end music sources dsps and the controller is there and next one is components when you move to components um, field components it's against speakers but remember not like in uh, pa situation in this BAG, bgm situations these are mostly placed at front of houses what are the front of houses where the guests are in any building where the guests are we we provide this bgm uh, background music right so while it gives the music uniformity it should not spoil aesthetic considerations right that's one more thing you need to consider when you have big background music i'll tell you why here you can see first one is a ceiling speaker that is very simple you can uh, fix that in the ceiling and the next one is called a landscape speaker and this one also landscape speaker but if you place 
place I need speaker like this in a, in a, in a, in where the plants are. Assume you have plants in the, some specific area. If you place this kind of a device or speaker, it will spoil that area, right? That aesthetic look will be spoiled. But if you prepare something like this in between the plants, you, you won't notice it, right? At the same time, it will give you the proper music. Similarly, this is kind of a rock, but this is again, landscape type speaker. It just like a rock. And this one is subwoofer. Subwoofer, you know what the subwoofer is generally. So again, it's a high fidelity sound. And again, it's suitable for uh, distributed, distributed music systems, right? So again, it has very high quality sound other than, than the other ones. And this one is a pendant speaker. Sorry, uh, this is a column speaker, this one. This is a column speaker. You can fix along a column without uh, any notice. I mean, it's not be noticed. Right? If you if fix this along a column, it's not noticeable, right? If the column is white, is this uh, speaker is white, it doesn't it doesn't do any uh, damage to aesthetic considerations. Even there are different colors, right? So this is that kind of situation. And this one, it looks like a light, but this is not light. This is a pendant speaker, right? It looks like a light, but there is a pendant speaker. Um, that we use for background music. And moving on to uh, programming software. So when you have digital signal processors, there are related audio programming softwares, right? So once you log into a DSP, right? Through the audio programming software, it will be like this. Not like this actually. You will see input size. Input size. This is these are inputs. I told you uh, the, even for even matrices, there are inputs and outputs. In this situation, this DSP has twelve inputs and eight outputs. Right? These uh, yellow color things are there. In between, you can do things. So these pieces are not there. You have to program it. There are devices you can select here. You can drag it and connect it. And you can do multiple uh, changes here. And then you can upload that to the DSP, right? If I zoom in a little bit. So this is left and uh, left side and right sides all combined together. And this is a music server, music server one, music server two, DVD player. And this is through a, a laptop. And there is a router, router to route uh, input sources to output process and gain input and the outside we have um i told you this specific dsp has eight outputs but we needed nine outputs that situation you can expand like this putting another dsp right like that you can do this programming and upload it it will run forever similarly you can program uh, this is a this is for dsp similarly you can run for other devices other network devices such as amplifier and uh, lcd controller these things also can, uh, can be programmed through this software. And this is some kind of uh, schematic diagram that I have uh, personally involved. Here, the same application that we uh, discussed earlier. Here we have two, sorry, here. Here we have the server room. In the server room, we have the music server. And so the server can be connected to local area network. And DSP is in the uh, ELV room or the ELV riser, and then DSP can be connected to the LAN again through the AVB switch. And after the DSP, DSP output will, output will be connected to the amplifiers, right? Here, four channel amplifier, two channel amplifier, and again, four channel amplifier, likewise, we have amplifier distribution. Amplifier, amplifier outside is, again, audio signal is uh, connected to the zones, right? Here, we see nine zones, Right, there, there are nine zones we distributed as required with the amplifiers. Right, so this case, in this case, we we have the amplifiers with uh, two, yeah, four channel amplifier has six hundred watt per each channel in that situation. So you need to 
be careful when you are assigning uh, speakers for these channels, it should not exceed 600 watt, right? So you should be careful when you are selecting speakers for each channel. Okay. Um, we met in the conductor of the BGM mega key and again, Mama then carry BGM mega key and background music. Can I get a picker high five background music? Can I get the uh, Tianawa Araka calling PA system mega game on a taken a pretty put the music quality value in one because mega environment again, ambience at the canaka again. Missing a mood digger again, occupant like a mood digger than the Tianaka background music can ever game a acre controls the better than the. So, take a the scene a creation example restaurant evening relaxing music at the time adjust devices different because these are a little bit advanced uh, advanced and uh, it was a it was a commonly so special point for B, PA, BGM and UX systems right uh, here. So there is something called low impedance interfacing and high impedance interfacing. In your houses, if you have a setup, you are connecting speakers to that setup in the closer vicinity, right? So this is that kind of application we call low impedance. That situation, amplifier and speaker connected straightly without any intermediate devices you can connect because the distance is short so for low impedance situation uh, can be varied with 4 ohms and 16 ohms these are uh, numerical figures goes with if you take the speaker there is this ohmic value amplifier there is this ohmic value you can set up to that values and connect the speakers mostly small systems with one or two speakers will take this low impedance situation but the speed uh, if the speakers are more than two, you go with high impedance. So what's with high impedance? Uh, high impedance systems are using transformers, right? After the amplifier, there is a transformer. At the amplifier side, there is a transformer. And the speaker side also, there is a transformer. Amplifier side, it's step up to kind of a high voltage. Generally, it goes with 70 watt, volt or 100 volt. So the purpose, one purpose is to distribute or transmit through a long distance. Other thing, to match the impedance. So that, so the amplifier should match the impedance of the speaker network. So these are called distributed line systems. And you can select 70 volt and 100 volts with high impedance. How do you connect these things? So this is the connection. Amplifier is there and step of transformer is there, right? And uh, here, this is a 70 volt line, high impedance line. And this side, the primary side of step down transformers, these are looping, we are looping these things. The field In the field wiring, this is what we do. We take a uh, cable from the rack because these amplifiers and step of transformers are inbuilt. You don't see this step of transformer outside, it's actually inside the amplifier, right? So you are looping these things like that. Even this amplifier, uh, uh, even this transformer is inbuilt within the uh, speaker. So this is high impedance application. In, in a commercial application, you see high impedance, high impedance distribution system. So mostly those are working with 70 volt and 100 volts. And again, design and planning techniques, I'm just going through. I'm, because we have not enough time to uh, talk about design consideration. But I'm, I'm telling you simple things that you, we should consider when we are doing the designs. The first one, evacuation management plan. So situation like this, right? Here, this is a four story building or three story building. There's a fire in this floor, right? So. Flows are numbers like this first, second, third, and fourth, which means, uh, yeah, third floor has the fire, right? Third floor has the fire. In that situation, uh, evac should, should be uh, should identify this third floor and fourth floor as 
red category as a red category is most important categories right so for those flows evac should give automatically messages to evacuate the area right so those are the most critical areas if you take other two flows blue category right along with the evacuation message Hello, evacuation message for this area. For this area, uh, evac can give alert message. There is a fire in this third floor. This is a, that is one alert, right? Likewise, so not not like the simple situation like this. If you have forty or fifty story building, this is very critical situation, right? So most closer floor should be uh, alarmed, right, about this about the situation. So we have to plan that initially, right? Before programming, we have to plan that uh, evacuation management plan. And the speaker arrangement and selection. Uh, speaker arrangement, usually if you take ceiling speakers, arrangement is like this. So distributed arrangement. So we are taking the speaker coverage area based on the speaker coverage angle and the geography of the building, right? So even you can select the speakers, right? Depending on the arrangement. If you don't have a ceiling or if it is an open space, you are using different type of speaker. Likewise, you have to select the speaker depending on the application. And the speaker settings, sometimes you can change the speaker setting because that there are power settings. You can tap uh, those positions. Those settings shall be, shall be matched with amplifier settings, right? Amplifier channel uh, capacity. You can match, you should match with those uh, speaker voltages. And the amplifier loading, the same thing I said earlier. And the system architecture. System architecture, in the sense, you can uh, select the devices, whether it's IP based system or it's a fully analog system. Likewise, you can select the dev devices, right? If you have a purely established IT network, you may have the you you can use that uh, facility to connect with IP based uh, BGM system, right? PA system or whatever. And even the messages. So we are having messages for evac system, evacuation messages. You have to carefully select these messages, right? So uh, these things you have to consider again. And the cabling. I didn't uh, talk about cabling. Cabling usually should be listed pair cable because these systems are sound signals right it can be distorted easily if there are there are outward, outside signals when you have tested pair cables it has a less uh, possibility to get that distortion because of the cancellation the tested pair cancel out the effects and shielded is very better shielded tested pair is the very good, good uh, uh, solution for cabling and generally i'm not going to discuss about cable sizing here Generally, uh, for most of the application, 18 AWG cable is sufficient. What is AWG? AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. But in Sri Lanka, we mostly use square millimeter uh, uh, unit for sizing the cable. This 18 AWG is equivalent to 1.5 square millimeter cable. Right? Sometimes, depending on the application, you may have to use 14 AWG or 16 AWG. WG cables, but uh, it's better to do proper calculation to do that. And with that, we'll move to applicable standards and regulations. And when you are doing a design, these are the standards you can follow BS 6259 and BSEN 60849, again, the sound systems. And the next one is BS5839. And this is for fire detection and alarm. But still, we have to go with this when you are having UAC, right? This will give you some consideration for UAC as well. And then CEDA fire regulations, very important thing that you need to follow in the first place because uh, this is a regulation, not like a standard, because regulation is more critical. I told you earlier as well. If you break the regulation, it's a breaking the law. So first priority shall be given to uh, this one, especially when you have evac situations, right? Abhi then, then, brief karo thing, make a special considerations. 
වගේ දේවල් අපි බිල්ඩින් එක මේ කොමන්ලි PA BGM ඉවැක් යද්දි කරන්න තියෙන දේවල් එතෙන්දී අපි ගොඩක් ස්පෙෂල් දේවල් තියෙන්නේ ඉවැක් වලට තමයි මොකද එතෙන්දී තියෙනවා ඉවැකුවේෂන් මැනේජ්මන්ට් ප්ලෑන් එකක් හදන්න තියෙනවා බිල්ඩින් එක ගත්තම ඒක කලින් හදන්න ඕනේ ඊළඟට තව තියෙනවා අපිට කේබල් සයිසින් කරද්දි කේබල් ටයිප් එක මොනවද කියලා කන්සිඩර් කරන්න තියෙනවා ඒ වගේ වෙරි බේසික් අයිටම්ස් එකක් තමයි දැන් කතා කරේ then we will move to the third system that we are going to discuss today wifi system or wireless lan system so wifi systems are built uh, having in the building in order to give access for users to browse internet in simple terms but in a build, big building it's a complex task let's see why um going to this premises you see the in the premises there are wireless access points and these access points are the devices that will give you um, access to internet right these are devices connect to the to a head end and uh, these these are the devices that you can connect your devices to to reach internet i'm going to uh, focus three persons in this premises right the first one is the green person and next one is the pink and the other one is blue right here we see ssid what is ssid service service set identifier in simple terms this is the network's name so when you switch on wifi or when you are searching for wifi this is the name you see for a network that is ssid here it's guest and here ssid is student and this one is staff if you go into more details about these uh, ssids you see i'm omitting this vlan situation this is download and upload speeds for the guest it has 1 megabyte per second download and 512 kilobytes per second upload and to take the staff it has 3 megabyte per second download 3 megabyte sorry 5 megabytes per second download 3 megabyte per second upload and this person 3 and 1 that is a one thing also there is a limitation of application is a bit so this one it has several application only but this person can go into much applications right so his application this guest applications are limited and often you will see this guest are not given full time internet access right it's generally ends with 1 hour 45 minute uh, slot in a day right so these things these kind of complex environment will not be possible without a proper controlled wireless lan system right because there are multiple users in a building right so so again other than that these wireless systems are categorized can be categorized into several frequencies right earlier it called dual frequencies because it supported 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz but nowadays it's coming with 6 gigahertz as well but it's still the um it's coming to the big picture but it's still which means it's coming to coming in the future right so if you go to the architecture of the wifi system it would be like this so there are access points which are connected to a switch and on the other side is the switch is connected to controller access point controller right so this controller will uh, have the management facility over this wireless network other than that you will see this colored Wi-Fi signs, right? Wi-Fi marks. The orange one and blue one. Here, the orange one stand for, um, I think five, right? Yeah, orange one stand for five, right? Five gigahertz. So some devices can work it with the five gigahertz range, and some devices can work with two point four gigahertz range, right? Uh, so you see, several devices are like that, and if you take uh, broadband connection at your house it's mostly 2.4 gigahertz and it will give you only one ssid 
you cannot uh, have multiple SSIDs. But in these situations, you can have several. You can have several uh, SSIDs. Not only that, you can have very controlled uh, facilities for each SSID, right? And if you more talk about the overview, uh, wireless LAN system can, connects two or more devices over a short distance, and uh, it will give proper connection to having internet. And it can be controlled either through a physical controller or a virtual controller. There are some things called virtual controller, which I'm going to discuss next. And APs can be powered up using power over ethernet. That's a one way. Uh, because it can give power from uh, DC power supply as well. But most commonly, we use power over ethernet, which means we are having the power from the same cable as the network cable. To have that, you need PO power switches. But uh, that part I'm going to dis discuss next. And the other thing, other parameter is Wi-Fi roaming. What is that? So this is a three-story building. And this is the entrance. A person entering into this building will reach him for uh, Wi-Fi access through this Wi-Fi access point. He will put whatever the password and whatever, and he will connect to the network and start his browsing and work along this area, work, work along this path, right? When the person is moving away from this access point uh, and it's and he is reaching for other access points, the signal strength of this one will be uh, diminished, diminished and other one will be cached. But remember, if it is not in the same network, this person has to connect to internet again to this Wi-Fi access point. If these are not networked properly, if these devices are not talking to each other properly, this person has to uh, put his password and whatever in each access point that he sees. But it doesn't happen because of this Wi-Fi roaming, right? Person can walk all along the way without any uh, trouble. Whenever you uh, connect to uh, one access point, that's enough. And what are the components in uh, wireless? LAN, wireless no, local area network. As I said before, there are wireless access points, different type of uh, wireless access points are there. Like this is a guest room type, and this is a ceiling type, and this is a outdoor type wireless access point. And also to power up these access points, there are PoE injectors, right? The PoE injector will take power from some another source and transmit uh, power through local area network cable. LAN cable towards the access point. That's a one way. Also, you can use PoE powered, PoE enabled network switches. In that case, you don't need another uh, PoE injector, right? So these are field components. What are the, at the head end? Wireless LAN controller, right? So this is very important. So when you don't have wireless LAN controller, like in this situation, when you don't have wireless LAN controller, uh, you can connect to your wireless access point and wireless access point connect to internet, to a router. Router should be somewhere here. And this is another wireless access point and this is another one. So there is no communication between these three devices, these three access points. and if this access point are adjacent, uh, this point, this access point doesn't know which channel this, per this person is using, this access point is using. And this one also trying to get the same channel because Wi-Fi channels are very different subject, but it's kind of a channel means like uh, 2 and 2 megahertz slot. So this 2.5 megahertz, sorry, gigahertz is not a single value, it's a range. There's a range. In that range, there are channels. If this person, sorry, this person and this person both trying to get the same channel, there will be a distortion, networking issues. So that shall be communicated properly. So why do we use wireless LAN controllers like this? Right? When you're deploying a inter enterprise uh, wireless local area networks, every uh, wireless access point is configured and managed independently 
from uh, another AB in the, in the same network, right? So, which means differently configured, but when you have this kind of wireless LAN controller, it can, uh, it can make the same basis because every device connect, uh, uh, talks with this, this device, right? Controller. Then this can assign different channel to different devices like that. Right, so the network network instability will be very low when you have wireless LAN controllers. Otherwise, that's a mess in in a big buildings. You cannot manage like that. Also, wireless LAN controller can be a virtual LAN controller. This is a new concept, uh, not very new, but uh, several years old, and especially products like Aruba will give you this one. Uh, this wireless LAN controller um, can be used as a virtual one. There is no physical wireless LAN controller. One of the access point becomes the controller virtually, right? There is no physical one. Virtually it becomes a wireless LAN controller. And so assume this is the network, wireless LAN network. Mm, it doesn't, we can't identify which one is that. It will change time to time, but Somewhere in the network, one device will act as the virtual LAN controller. And this is a cost effective situation because we don't need costly access point controller, right? That's a cost effective situation. And uh, there's a limitation, as I said before, uh, this cannot be used beyond 128 uh, access points, but uh, lesser than that, this is a very cost effective, uh, effective uh, solution. And if you uh, dig into, uh, interface of a virtual LAN controller, right? Wireless LAN controller. I'll just go through the uh, things you can see in a controller, right? In this situation, there's only one network, right? There's only one network. Uh, this one, this is the SSID we have. It shows how many clients are connected through your SSID, right? And, and how many access points are in the network. And also it shows how many clients are connected to this uh, each access point? So this is access points, uh, MAC address. So MAC address is machine address. Uh, that's a different subject, but this this can be, uh, I mean, access point is identified through the MAC address here, right? How many clients are connected to each uh, MAC address will be shown here. And how many clients are there? 58 clients and what are the details of them? So when you put a name to your phone, so it should be show, shown here. And here it will show the um, SSID that the person is connected. Here we have only one SSID in this example. So only one SSID will be there. Also, it will show IP address of the, of the master. The master can be changed time to time, I told you, because of uh, this virtual environment, virtual control environment. And there is another dashboard with signal, speed, and what are the access point connected, etc. Right? Uh, in physical controllers, there are more applications, more uh, details, like more than that. But uh, for a small application, this is enough. And lastly, regarding the Wi-Fi system, there's an important thing to discuss: Wi-Fi heat maps. So Wi-Fi heat maps is a visual representation of the wireless signal coverage and strength, right? So we do this wireless heat mapping in two stages, in the design stage and in the uh, verification stage, and the after installation, right? Verification stage. How do we do that? There are softwares that we can uh, simulate. We can take AutoCAD drawing first of the building and then you can uh, give the details of the building. What are the details? Where the walls are? What type of walls are there? And uh, what's the ceiling height? Right? What, what type of material is used for the wall? Those details can be given as input to the software. Because this is very important. Because uh, beyond some areas, Wi-Fi doesn't work, right? So when you have concrete walls, it's a huge obstruct to uh, Wi-Fi signals. Likewise, uh, you need to give specific parameters of the building as well when you are uh, placing these things. 
afterwards you can place wi-fi points in the, in the places where you need and remember when you are after you have placed the wi-fi points you need to specify the brand and the model that can be selected from the software so because different models will you will give you different uh, capabilities right therefore we have to select the specific model and for this model only we can do this simulation if you take another model this heat map, map will be different right how do we do this you place in this situation you see this greener ones high signal strength and here and this location this location and likewise you put different uh, ap's for different locations and they, then we check whether this total area is covered how can we check that you can see this bar here uh, this with a sign of minus 67 so this is the signal strength when you are moving away from the device or the access point signal strength is getting low right here minus 67 and this side it's like uh, 50 40 30 and like that as we reach towards the uh, access point the signal strength is high now the acceptable range is minus 67 for wi-fi uh, signals to operate i mean to have a proper wi-fi uh, network in the premises minus 67 is the limit right if your system is minus six above the minus 67 signal strength then you can uh, accept that design right that is how it goes that is a one stage based on this arrangement and set it, setting up you can order and place your device and afterward in after installation also we need to do wi-fi heat map in pro proper verification we have to do that because we need to check whether you have reflected your initial design properly how do we do that that is active heat mapping a person or operator has to go with the laptop with the dual band frequency antennas and he has to move all, all around the building here and there every place he have to walk and by walking he can col collect the data right wi-fi data signal strength data right with that uh, data he can create another wi-fi heat map that is an active heat map very accurate because that's taken from the practical experience so these are one uh, one one i mean two instances that we conduct wi wi-fi heat mapping so I'm summarize kiyawa thinking about wi-fi system ekak kiyanne normal api gewalla thiyena system ekak nevei meke di karanne me api gewalla thiyena router ekak attarama meke di api karanne wi-fi network ekak hadala etara loku management part ekak thiyenawa mokada different users la innawa api bill in ekak gattawa bill in ekak innawa guest la innawa bill in eke weda karana aya staff ekak innawa e wagema thawa parties inna puluwa operators ta inna puluwan e wage athan ara api example ekak thiyawa students ta inna puluwan e wage case ekak etawata different how to alter then not different uh, wi-fi setup because again summer right then not a staff right then not a full full uh, wi-fi access then you know, high speed because maybe you go to the name uh, official right after that they were under full access then not uh, ever game uh, applications ready normal light order ever get the other you know uh, any sir wi-fi network okay hurry the other you know local building a couple there is a major component of the wi-fi control and there is a wireless access point. And there is a wireless access point. There is a wireless access point. There is a wireless access point. Different types. There is an outdoor application. There is a guest room. There is a ceiling. There is a mount. There is a mount. There is a mount. There is a cabling. There is a normal cabling. There is a local area network cabling. Data cabling. There is a mount. There is a mount. Controllers type the Gatina, virtual controller skill at the Nava, physical controller skill at the Nava, some are brands of the Rathian virtual controller. It's got a KD virtual controller KD, physical controller copy physical gun known in a hair, device a game at the sorry, a network game with the access point tech, virtual controller Gavinava, Villa, I am normal controlling current in management function like a Karana. It was a month in my career, Wi Fi heat map in again, Wi Fi heat map Pegay the Karani. Uh, Metanadang, we will negate the 
structure can any walls the end of the doors the end the windows at the end of the arrangement at the material type at the check or no wi-fi disturb when you come to get a building negative break at the copy uh wi-fi point place color simulate color ballon of a strength take a drop in the home of the gear drop in a strength a limit take a time minus 67 key in a signal level like a look at the making making a way at the time i signal strength are doing i do in some of my start in a travel it would have uh point at a long way in the product uh high strength you know pointing at the other and then i do know it i'm a throw a mono hari obstacle like a thing on our way uh uh more like a game in a tongue boy again it in the product look close that you know it's a hard year to plan current when i'm a initial stage stage again the game on the matter my api of my install color finally got a wake up active heat mapping got it in the garage uh a device piece of tag up the camera they could take a field again with you know every dollar collect on our wi-fi data collect color is i'm going to be leading them through every dollar a data value happy may maybe heat map and i'm not getting so if they're not in the pool a data collect around us right let's let's move to a next uh system yes room management system now before moving they yeah, didn't sorry to disturb that there were some uh, few videos to be played right those videos to be played at the end of the session or uh through for these two uh, systems guest room management and um other one is uh, av control AV controls, right okay okay right okay yeah thank you right uh before moving to guest room management system we'll just uh, go with what a conventional hotel room is in a conventional hotel room, that's a manual operation, just like in our houses. You have to manually switch on lights, air conditioning, window blinds, everything you have to do it manually, right? There is no connection with uh, other systems, right? Integration with other systems. So in the, in the buildings, we have property management systems and etc. There is no interface with those systems in conventional hotel rooms. But when you go, when you go to uh, these kind of advanced hotel rooms now it is comfortable i mean very uh like uh higher hotel chains like if, if i if i name my like hilton marriott or whatever then those things you need high facilities for the guests right so this guest room management system kind of automation system for the hotel room i'll show you how it's going to work and it will at much comfort to the quick points. If I take this diagram and simply explain what's happening here, just like I said earlier, it's again input control and output. So here there are input devices like, like emergency buttons, locks, and there are different different like temperature controllers, switching devices, and uh, what else? Sensors, likewise. And the output can be like uh, li lights, light fittings, and uh, air conditioners, televisions, likewise, give some signals to some devices and getting output signals. I'll just explain more in the next slide. Now, if I if you take this diagram, it will give you much understanding about that. Now here. If you take a sing single room, it has a lighting arrangement, right? So through the guest room management system, you can control lighting. And then there can be door sensors, right? And the thermostat. Thermostat is to control air conditioning. And the drape control, window control. Mostly we have motorized windows in these situations. And DND. MUR, which means do not disturb, make up room signage, and the motion sensors. These things are in the hotel room, and these uh, are connected to a controller, and there is a workstation somewhere in, else in the building. So the operator can watch these things and control these things from a remote position. And this is con connected with hotel management servers, right? Not only that, it can connect with hotel property management servers. The property management service is uh, not limited to a specific hotel. If it is a hotel chain, uh, 
this is connected to the property management system of the hotel chain right also arise through management apps for specific uh, products right so these are the things or features in the grms i'll show you some video next uh, maybe it will will require some bandwidth so i'll uh, switch off my uh, uh, video and i i post time to time so that uh, you can understand the things so in this situation a guest is uh, moving towards a hotel and first he is moving to reception I'll pause at that point. The person moves to the uh, reception and then he's taking his key card from the reception, right? Key card for the room number 102. Then, then uh, the operator will move to that software, the operator software, and just uh, put that the room is occupied. This occupancy um switch they they want it's just, just like an indication person moves to the hotel room and put his key card onto key card holder and then when the key card holder is entered it takes a signal, right? Key card holder takes a signal and it will move that signal to room controller unit. There is a controller here. It will give the, that, that signal to room controller unit. And then what happens is room controller will take that signal as the welcome note and it will switch on some lights. Welcome yeah. lights. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry to disturb but can we uh, mute the video and then you can continue with the video play without without the voice like without the music of the video itself if you can switch off is there any possibility like i think that will work otherwise it uh, you right, right, right. yeah okay i'll check that sorry Please. Sorry to interrupt, but I think uh, that will work better. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's okay. Right. Um, I resume the, from the point uh, here. So controller will give welcome light and uh, then not only welcome lights, it will set up for the setting up the uh, initial or occupancy temperature settings. You can set that up as well, right? So it's set to 21 Celsius. And not only that, so it's open in the window screens, right? Window blinds will be opened. And with that, it will give a signal to the operator, right? Room controller will give a signal to the operator that these are the settings in the room. See, in this situation, um, the room temperature is 21 Celsius. Main light is on, other lights are off. All the details are observed here because the controller will uh, upload those data to this operator. And the person is work, uh, working here and he need 
to uh, set light into a working mode. And the controller take that signal and it will uh, switch off some lights and switch on some lights like this. This uh, table lamp is switched on. And after a time, person need to uh, read something. So he put it in the ready mode. When you put the ready mode, controller take that signal, switch off many lights and just switch on these bedside lamps. And this one do not disturb. The indication goes to uh, the entrance. And next person is sleeping now, sleeping mode. Signal taken by the controller. And switch off the lights or and setting up different temperature values, 19 Celsius. Not only that, it will uh, close the curtains because the remote these are uh, motorized controllers. Right. The next morning, person is leaving and gives this card, key card to the uh, receptionist. And the receptionist mark that room as inoccupied. What happens when the when the signal is uh, set up? All the lights um, all the lights will be switched off. Air conditioning mostly goes to uh, not not to the off position, some set up set off value that can be set up. Right, so some different some temperature is there. It will be set up, so it goes to that standby mode. Right, so these are the applications. Some of the application you can go with uh, guest room management system. Right, so this is this add comfort to the equipment. So this is the main concern, uh, main uh, objective of having this kind of applications. Right, what are the components that we have in, the, in this GRMS? So, as I said, there's a controller in each room, right? This, this is the device that take, that's the, that take in, that becoming the interface to uh, room sensors and giving the output to controllers, right? I mean, give output to uh, whatever the light fittings, thermostat or the devices. And the next one is DND, uh, make my room, doorbell, and etc. And the bedside panels, uh, I think uh, you have observed that using that video, there are bedside panels like that. And the key card switch. And this is again an input signal. Our next one is thermostat. This is used to uh, control the fan speed of the air conditioner and to set up the temperature of the air conditioner, right? This is a network device. And the present detectors, just to check whether the person is there in the room or not. And the door window contact, just to check whether any sliding door or window is open or not. And the light switches, just as we saw in that video. And this is the network arrangement or ismetic drawing. So in this situation, we have several floors, right? And if you take this floor, this room, and there is room controller unit, RCU. So this is the controller you saw in that one. The controller, room controller is connected to flow switch of the LAN, local area network. And similarly, all the rooms are connected. I mean, the room control units are connected to local area network and through the network switches it's connected to hotel management server as well and you can set up the things accordingly um, also we have operator arrangement front desk housekeeping engineering security management likewise you can remotely monitor and control things through these uh, workstations 
So this is the arrangement of GRMS. Now make a visitor clothing a BRMS can get through management system make up. Eka use karan name a can a occupant. A guest letter, a comfort take a very grand normal like copy than someone light and light take up your own karan no get the other one. Him a cut make a hand, make it the end. Group a creator set up karan a bulang it amatara. A room make it in some puna network again, light light fittings, temporary setting, a coma remotely monitor karan a bulang. Monitor sa control karan bulo. I can okay one can hit yana that a condition a coma the light up on la than at the end again of coma observe karan bulo. Make a hammer room control at the end of control against my input taker outside at the end. Maybe a network together what I mean network edi a connect a latina flow suggestor at a local area network at local area network at a latina hotel management survey at a work station. You know, you're going to make work station through my work station communicate karan at the time RC week. तो रहेगा तेक का मैं स्टेटस हरी एट में गाना पुलवा एंड लास्टली द सिस्टम दैट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इस एवी ऑडियो वीडियो कंट्रोल सिस्टम ऑडियो विजुअल और ऑडियो वीडियो कंट्रोल सिस्टम सो दिस ऑडियो विजुअल कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स मोस्टली रिक्वायर्ड फॉर फंक्शनल स्पेसेस सच एस मीटिंग रूम्स बैंकवर्ट्स कंफरेंस � etc and uh, this is mostly a user specific system there is no hard and fast rule to design these things right it shall come from the customer based on customer requirements uh, engineers has to select appropriate components for the operation so if you take this diagram for a simple understanding Here we see inputs, just like in the previous situation, we see inputs and outputs, and there is a processing devices. There's a processing device here, right? So it can control everything from, from a sing single interface, right? Every di different devices. If you take this diagram, you will see multiple items, right? So this is there are laptops, video cameras and cable tvs monitors sound systems uh, you see uh, again screens and projectors etc there are multiple devices and you don't take all these items from a single brand even right you don't take uh, everything like this brand and this brand is not uh, possible like there can be different products but the challenge is combining all together to have this requirement that's the challenge so uh, effectively removes the need for a stack of remote controllers. If you take this system, you must have seen here, there are screens, projectors. So everything will need a remote controller. But if in a situation like this, in a banquet hall or wherever, if you put several remotes, it's again a very complex situation, right? Each device will have a separate remote, right? So that's not a very easy situation for the operator. So as I said, this connect everything together, but it has to be very smooth control, smooth management. Also, it will reduce technical onboarding and the learning curve for users. The meaning of this is that uh, when you integrate systems like this in a simpler format, you do operators doesn't require special training, right? Because the hard part parts are managed by the devices. So the human interference is not much complex then, right? So that's one thing. And another thing is HD base T supported. And what is this HD base T for, for, the, for the audience who hear that for the first time I'm telling this, I'm telling this, this is a worldwide connectivity standard that enables single cable to carry multiple signals and power simultaneously because uh, this is very special right it allows uncompressed full hd video remember video audio and ethernet power over cable control signals everything can be carried together with this technology this is standard right and most importantly this can run through cat cables Cat cables, category cables, uh, category six, category five, 
six A cables like that. So most importantly, these this uh, standard can I mean devices in this standard can run through these CAT cables. So it will uh, give you advantage of having uh, extension. I mean the extension for longer distances, right? When you have uh, HDMI or VGA cables, you you can't travel more than several uh, feet. But if you have this arrangement, SD based T uh, T based T arrangement, it can travel up to hundred meters easy because that's a limitation of CAT cable, right? So when you are designing this kind of audio video control system, you need to identify whether your devices are supported by HD based T, right? Otherwise, in in the integration state, that become a real challenge. So this this uh, standard is very not very old, right? It's uh, it's old like ten to twelve years, but uh, in nowadays upcoming devices, all the devices are supporting this uh, protocol actually. So I'm having another video to make you understand about AV control systems. Right in this arrangement, uh, AV control system, we are having a conference room. In the conference room, there's a touch panel as you can see, right? A person is coming to this room and goes to the touch panel and it, he operates like this. Right, uh, so that person can see several options and who he move, uh, selected the option of uh, presentation. When you select that option, what will happen? Let's see. So you can see some devices are moving here and there, right? Actually, these devices are uh, where, where I have stopped. This is a projector lift, right? With that single signal, everything operates. So this projector is hidden in the ceiling because in this situation, it's, since this is a presentation, projector needs to be there. So it's coming out through the lift. And this is projector screen. And through the projector, there should be a projector lift, so projector screen. So simultaneously, that should uh, come down. And the next thing is uh, conference equipment. Uh, this conference equipment is used to like, you can connect your mobile phone to this conference equipment and you can take calls. And this device is connected to audio system of that room. Then what will happen? Everyone can hear the voice of the person speaking outside very clearly through the speakers. Right? All the speakers are having this signal. Also, for users to speak, I'll show you that. For users to speak, user can select this uh, microphone and user can speak. You don't need to go here and there towards the uh, mobile phone to talk, right? So the system is integrated because audio inputs are coming through these devices. So this is a uh, retra retractable monitor and this is a retractable microphone. This will be hidden when there is no, no requirement. And also, if you need to uh, give your inputs, if you need to present your content, you can plug in a HDMI cable to these outlets and you can give that, right? Mm -hmm. 
and finally after the uh, presentation is over we need to shut down the meeting room now we put we select goodbye here now otherwise what will happen we need to separately control each and every equipment equipment right if it is a projector if it is a projector you need to uh, set the projector off and put the everything back in the situation but this is very easy this is uh, already there with the uh, proper integration now see everything uh, goes back to original positions and even lights will be switched off with a goodbye So this is the arrangement of uh, of a AV control system, right? So let's talk about the devices that you can see in a AV control system. The first one, um, matching this with this diagram. First one is AV matrix feature. So this is the brain of this uh, control system, right? It take inputs and it use the outputs right so here one more thing a most complex thing with av thing uh, av systems is cabling cabling for longer distance as i said you before with uh, with the introdu introduction of hd based you can easily use cat cable to uh, travel longer distances but for interfaces you need to have hd based supportive devices Right. So if we go with this application, right here we have a laptop. And here we have a PC. A PC or a laptop, you can give your signal through a wall plate transmitter like this. Right. So this transmitter will accept your signal and it will. Uh, send that or transmit the signal through cat cables towards the AV matrix, right? Some situations, AV matrix itself cannot accept this. So therefore, we need these receivers to accept it. The receivers, one side will be cat cable, other side will be HDMI out. So this AV matrix can take HDMI signals from this receiver. And one more thing, we can give signals through cables as we sit here. We can give signals through cables through your laptop. And there is another way we can use wireless. Even using your mobile phone, if you can, uh, if you need to show something to the audience using your mobile phone, you should have the ability, right? So even if a person is not having these uh, cabling facilities, cable connection facilities, wireless uh media option should be there so there are my wireless media receivers like that that can be connected to this av matrix right that's the one thing again and this two this uh, av matrix do very complex functions actually this situation when we are presenting something to the laptop we are giving audio signals and video signals separately. So, sorry, to, uh, totally, right? Collectively, we, we will give audio signals and video signals. But this device will split that, right? Out, in the output, there will be sound systems separately, video systems separately, right? Like this. This is a TV, television, or screen. And here we have a projector, right? That will split the uh, signal to audio and video. And one more thing, there we have something called scalar here, scalar and receiver here, because scalar is requires to uh, match the desired resolution or the and the frame rate of the projector. Because when the AV matrix is passing some resolution, it, it may not match the um, projector's resolution. So to match that, you should have one scalar near the projector, right? 
And the next item is multimedia projectors. It's a normal projector that we have. And of course, uh, nowadays, advanced projectors are coming with HD based again. You can directly connect to HD based um, connection to the projector. It's again a jack, uh, RJ45 jack. You can see outside. And the motorized projector lifts. We just saw how the projector lift operates. And keypad controllers like this, right? Uh, you can select light, pan, shades, and whatever. You can program this. No worries. Even you can have uh, these eight button panels to two button panels or one button panels. That is very much uh, programmable. And then the touch screen controller. And this touch screen controller is the one uh, you saw in that video. The person is accessing, right? This touch, touch screen controller connects with that AV matrix. And you can put some uh, controlling through this controller. Other than that, you can see in standby situation, this is for a meeting room. It shows uh, availability of the meeting room. It says available for next, available for next 27 minutes. And the bottom, you see these slots. These slots are meeting slots. So, which means this room is reserved for these time slots that can be, uh, that should be already given, right? So there is no no uh, confusion. Person when the person goes to meeting room, he know whether there is meeting or not, right? And this one is motorized projector screen. You just saw that how that operates and what the application of this. And again, the audio amplifiers, which is very similar to uh, background music situation, because this has again one audio part. I'll show that uh, in the next diagram that I have. Right, this is the practical application that I have involved. So here, this is for a banquet room. In the banquet room, we had uh, wall plates like this. Wall plates are transmitters, right? We can input our HDMI signals to our laptops or whatever to this wall plate. And wall plate from the wall plate, there will be cat cables towards the rack. So all this area is the rack, right? In the, inside the rack, there are a lot of equipment. And there are POE, POE injectors to power up this wall plate in the rack. And there are receivers. I talked about these devices before, just to accept this uh, HD based signal and send that to this feature through HDMI cable. And as I said before, this feature or matrix can split uh, into video signals and audio signals. So here it will give you to view the video signals in this end. And again, we need a transmitter because rack location and projector locations are not same, right? Not the same. That can be somewhere else and projector is up there, right? So you need to transmit that signal to again, again to longer distance. So again, you need to cut cable through a transmitter. And transmitter is there and scalar is near to the projector. After the scalar, there are two cables running. Actually, this is near the scalar there. Sorry, this is near the projector. So there is much more much challenge of uh, having this cable because it's in the same location. But there are two cables. What the reason for that? Uh, HDMI cable is to give you video signal, as we know. And there is another cable for RS-232 application. So this RS-232 cable is used to switch on this projector. You know, when you have a television, you need a remote controller to give you a switch on that television, right? So similarly, this should have some input signal to switch on that. The switching signal will be given by this cable and the video signal is coming somewhere else. Uh, actually, that is split is done by the scaler. Meanwhile, it's matching the resolution of the uh, projector. That is the one way, wired application through a wired way we can give some signal and I didn't complete one part. I, I completed only video part. There is one audio part here. Before that, I'll move to uh, this wireless situation. If I need to put something in a wireless format, there are there are presentation devices, wireless presentation devices, right? So it's uh, it can be anywhere because whereas we can reach through wireless uh, access you can put this anywhere so what this does is this will 
give uh, some username and password to the users in the vicinity and when the person knows that he can connect to this device when this device is connected to your mobile phone you can um, present any content in your mobile phone in laptop easily in, in a wireless format and this device is connected to the switcher and switcher is again connected to some devices like you know the same same situation right again through the hdmi cable you can take the video content here and audio content in both cases audio cable is there to co cable and audio content we can uh, route that to this dsp digital signal processor this is actually source right for dsp this is a source this connector here uh, dsp understand it has some kind of uh, input signal and it amplifies and distribute all over the area so in simple words if you play some music from your laptop and it will goes goes in a long way right it, uh, it takes several signal transmissions and through several devices and the video goes to the projector and audio and again it's uh, changing its format to several locations and goes to the dsp again and the amplifier and goes to the speakers very long which is a very complex situation but for the user that's a very comfortable uh, experience other than that there can be a situation like this here we have wireless microphones wireless microphone in the field and and there are antennas to accept this signal and along this line again it's connected to the dsp for the dsp these wireless signals are again a music source so dsp can have several inputs so here also it takes as another input so meanwhile you are having this uh, projection of your content this person like uh, anyone can speak right anyone can speak through this wireless microphones both combination is there other than that here we have projector projector control projector lift control and projector screen control remember when you put some content here that thing should operate no right projector lift should come down projector screen should come down otherwise you cannot do that so all those things can be managed through uh, this attachment and there is a eight button panel that will uh, give you volume control or maybe some even you can set up a uh, projector control as well you can program this eight button panel for the different applications you need so this is what uh, i have planned to cover today if i take it in single so antimama qa audio visual control system ekak kiyana gana meka special application ekak hamba dana mathiyena ekak nevai very uh, high end customers uh, meka use karanne meke eyalage comfort ekak wedi karaganna thiyena meeting rooms alu banquet room ilangata conference room age e wage so e wage thiyenawa different applications ekena apita samahal laada puluwang eka meeting ekak wenna puluwang discussion ekak wenna puluwang presentation ekak wenna puluwang e situation ekak ekka apita meeting room ekak thiyena devices wala avashthawaya wenas wenawa etoda api avashthawaya program karala thibbata passe room ekak etakota api avilla ay api avashthawaya touch panel ekak dunnata passe room ekak thiyena devices ekata anuwa me hada gehena eka api manual karanna awashya naha මොකද සම එහෙම එක්සැම්පල් එකේදී අපි හිටපු ප්‍රසන්ටේෂන් එකට ගිහිල්ලා අපි ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක වෙනම ඔන් කරලා රිමෝට් වලින් වෙනම දාලා එහෙම එහෙම කරන්න අවශ්‍ය නැහැ. අර ටච් පැනල් එකේ තියෙන ඔප්ෂන් එකේ විතරක් අපි වැඩ කරන්න පුළුවන්. ඊට පස්සේ ඔක ඉන්ටිග්‍රේට් කරන්න පුළුවන් ගොඩක් ඇප්ලිකේෂන් ඒ කියන්නේ තව පුළුවන් මොබයිල් ෆෝන්ස් වල දැන් මාර වීඩියෝ එක වෙන්න විදිය මොබයිල් ෆෝන් එකේ තියෙන කෝල් එකක් වුණත් මේ මේ ස්පීකර් සරහා අහන විදිහට හදා ගන්න පුළුවන්. ඊට පස්සේ ඉගෙන අපේ මේ ඊළඟ වයර්ලස් ඇප්ලිකේෂන් එක කියන්නේ මොබයිල් ෆෝන් එකේ තියෙන දෙයක් සවුන්ඩ් එක අපිට දාගන්න පුළුවන් ස්පීකර්ස් ඒ කියන්නේ ස්පීකර්ස් කියන්නේ ඔය අපේ සීලිං ස්පීකර්ස් වලට වගේ දාගන්න පුළුවන් ඊළඟ මොබයිල් ෆෝන් එකේ තියෙන කන්ටෙන්ට් එකක් ප්‍රොජෙක්ටර් එකට දාගන්න පුළුවන් ලැප්ටොප් එකේ තියෙන එකක් දාගන්න පුළුවන් ඒ වගේ ගොඩක් යූසර් ෆ්‍රෙන්ඩ්ලි එන්වයිරන්මන්ට් එකක් හදන්න පුළුවන් මේ AV කන්ට්‍රෝල් සිස්ටම් එක සෝ මේක මේක ඩිෆරන්ට් ඇප්ලිකේෂන් එකක් ඒ කියන්නේ ගොඩක් තැන් වල නැති එකක් බට් very interesting subject uh, if you if you like to have this audio video control system and another thing I, as i said before this is a very new 
this car this car with very new standards i told you one hd bsd is 10 years old right so it, equipment are still processing and this is very uh, like refreshing subject if you like, like to learn so this is the content uh, ladies and gentlemen i planned for today so i'm not, not sure whether mr narin if you have if we have enough time to discuss a uh, question and answer if it is possible i can take few questions yes yes engineer dilan thank you very much and it, yeah through that it was a very heavy content but uh, we obviously have to at least touch those areas and thank you very much for your uh, comprehensive presentation still within the, within the given time frame so ladies and gentlemen we have the attendance sheet, sheet to be marked in and the zoom chat box so we highly appreciate you can do it as quick as possible and even in the youtube live streaming also you can find this attendance sheet um moving into the q and a because we are almost 9:30 at the time so what we recommend is if you have any issue please uh, uh please put your questions into our whatsapp numbers and we will compile them and send it to engineer dilan and still i think we can give uh, one or two hand raises so there there was a hand raise from is it from jayanth somebody i saw one hand raise from okay meantime there, there was a there was certain questions from different subject dilan if you can just elaborate a little bit about this uh, hd based t like uh, i felt for a moment that it's like a PO e switch or oh, it's it's like a, it's like an active uh, one second please huh? sanjay there are, there were some uh, complaints that the attendance sheet cannot be filled is it time out or any no no it is working now already 45 people has registered mm, there were a lot of messages like cannot fill the form it's maybe uh, i think Now three hundred has three hundred has three hundred forty two has marked the attendance list already. Okay, so there is uh, no issue. Can they try again if the attendance cannot enter? Link is not working. There are certain chat box messages. Can you please? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll check it. I'll check it. I'll check on that. Okay, please. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of messages. Please uh, wait for a moment, and uh, we will send another link if it is not working. Yeah. And Dylan, if if you can take few uh, like one or two minutes. to elaborate a little bit about this hd based team because uh, it's a new technology i think people have some interest to over yeah uh, okay um, generally this is uh, like uh, we have 1000 based application for uh, i'm not sure i'm audible yeah please please go ahead yeah okay uh, we have 1000 based application for that uh, ethernet situation right so for like fire fiber optic situation we have different uh, technology likewise uh, for audio video system there wasn't any uh, uh, protocol or standard before but uh, this one was introduced in 2010 as i recall uh, this is to uh, send uh, combinedly video signals audio signals and data signals and control technical signals together as i uh, to shown you in the diagram it sent a control signal and the video signal together right and uh, at the end it can split into using some device into the requirement required signal for example if it is a projector projector will need a signal to switch on also it need a signal i mean it should be it should have the video signal as well those are two different signals but you can run both signals in the same format using this technology but uh, when you are uh, selecting the equipment you should have to uh, un, uh, i mean check you should have to check whether these devices are uh, compatible if you are end start and end is not compatible for ebst and you end up with disaster because uh, we don't know whether uh, you we can take any other device from outside to match this uh, protocols in that situation so we have to select the devices accordingly Uh, whether to, to match this hd based uh, t uh, platform so in in summary it can combinedly send uh, data video audio and control signals together combinedly 
So the cat, HD, cat cables through cat cables. Right? Yeah, one important thing is that cat can uh, transmit through cat cables because audio video signals cannot transmit more than fifty feet or whatever. But if you have the cat cable, it has the facility to travel more than I mean nearly hundred meters. So that facility also there. And also, as you mentioned, that the, the commands like apart from this old video signals, is it something like a concept of a parity bit? You have a parity bit at the end, so it's it has a command separately apart from this video signals. Is it the way of uh, it, it transfer, or is, is there any different uh, packet technology, or is there any different method of transmitting the video signal together with the control signal? Yeah, it's it's it shall necessarily use different frequencies, and uh, in the in the, in the same uh, cable. It will parallelly send the, all the signals, like maybe it will compress to compress media signal to some frequency and audio signals to some frequency like that. Uh, that's a parallel actually. The data signals, everything can be uh, carried together. It's a proprietary technology. I think it's uh, introduced by Samsung. Samsung, right? Yeah. All right, Dilana, thank you very much. And now uh, there are a lot of questions came through the WhatsApp group as well, so we will uh, simply compile them and send it to you. And then uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will share through our uh, WhatsApp groups. And we highly appreciate all your presence today. And it's now 9.36, so it, I think it's uh, time to wind up at least by before 9.40. Uh, Dylan, do you have any, any final message to give this, especially these young engineers? Because I'm sure that uh, it, was, it, it would have uh, not been the proper time to understand all these designs and the concept, but uh, Yes, you have opened a lot of uh, areas and you have shown that the availability of the, the different systems. And do you have any final remarks or the message to this, especially these young engineers, how they have to improve their career and maybe few lessons from your life, like from your professional life? Did I? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, uh, since um, I have learned this from the practice, so, I know the uh, hardness that uh, we need to uh, get through the career. So as a message for those who are willing to come into this sector, uh, additionally, it, as I said in the beginning, this field is evolving and very interesting day by day. And personally, I the, this, this changing nature keeps me driving through this field. So every instance, every instance you get new updates and uh, there is new thing to learn. And, as a result, you cannot repeat the same thing over and over again. Right? So, firstly, we need to learn things, and most importantly, if you need, if you can uh, learn to unlearn things, right, with the updates. So, as the time passes by, you have to learn things, and when the updates are there, you need to unlearn those things and replace those with advancements and learn again. So. Again, these systems are everywhere in the world, and even if the person is uh, trying for the foreign uh, employment, these things comes in handy. Also, uh, since a lot of beginners are here, like I, I think that there are under, undergraduates as also in the audience. So I would uh, like to mention some other aspect about the career. So the career beginnings will be very hard and challenging. So as I experienced, because if you don't pass and if, if you don't pass these hard and challenging instances, and uh, if you are give up the challenges, you, you wouldn't uh, take the pinnacle that you could have achieved with those, right? Uh, like in the knowledge, there are some things you can learn by uh, someone or reading, right? Even through this webinar, we can teach some things, but this is one kind of knowledge. We call this uh, explicit, explicit knowledge. And there are things that you need to learn by experience we call this tacit knowledge but if you don't go to the heart of your content or the working experience you will never get the opportunity to get that uh, tacit knowledge and you will not end up with good leader and that's uh, one kind of message that i should, I should give you and uh, uh, because most of the uh, young engineers is trying in the easiest way but if you don't go hard if you don't go to the hard core and the end will want, I mean, the career will not be uh, very handy as you could have been. So that's one of the message uh, that I would to highlight because this is, I'm telling from my personal experience uh, in the working experience. Otherwise, so I think if I miss some opportunities that could I could have done uh, 
in the past and i wouldn't uh, learn some things that i know today so that's uh, my uh, message for young engineers thank you thank you engineer dilan and thank you very much and it was uh, so precious in terms of a final remark and a message i i'm sure that people special people have uh, done something very special that's how they become special that that's what uh, the book says therefore i think that if you are into a way of becoming a special person you have to do something very special so with that remark ladies and gentlemen we would like to wind up the session today and as you know that the whole cpd program the electrical and elv program is uh, concluded by today's session so please be in touch with all this uh, whatsapp group and other our, our communication and networks like emails and there could be different whatsapp messages as well so we'll be sharing all educational session educational materials in the future at the same time the q and a the answers for the questions you raise and especially we are planning to share some career opportunities even in the foreign context as well through our whatsapp channels and at the same time any future our prospective learning opportunities would be shared through this whatsapp messages so ladies and gentlemen you have been a great audience throughout these last four sessions of uh, sunday evenings and you have spent i think your sunday evenings for a worthy cause and ourselves as well as the organizing committee i have the pleasure to thank you very much and please be in touch and please be in uh, for the challenge because as we mentioned at the beginning because this challenge is not a challenge which you have ever faced so far because the situation is completely different and we and yourself should be the rebuilding generation for the future of the country so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much being in touch and be safe at the same time try to grab the knowledge and try to apply those knowledge into practice because as i mentioned in the beginning knowledge is not power anymore knowledge is just a potential power so it has to be applied in practice then only it becomes a power with that remark we would like to conclude the session and thank you very much and have a pleasant evening good night thank you dilan uh, thank you dilan have you having me on this forum uh, thank you everyone from uh, magnus team to having me this thank you very much okay thank you